A very good morning. It's day four of the Coop Aeronautic Gordon Bennett. It's the 64th and it's Gordon Bennett TV live from Poland, from Turin. I'm your host, Regan Tetlow. In the studio, we've got producer Mark and we have a brand new race leader. Hello, good morning. So after a long night in low altitude now, we start to get in warm a little bit. It's now 70 degrees in the basket. Uh, it's the best time to to get naps and relax now. And um, the balloon is full. We are still climbing. So and we are flying over Alsace area, Mulhus. We left the border of uh, Germany with the rain and France just over there. So let's go for for all the day and, and see you tonight. What an exciting night it's been, Mark. Well, bring us up to date where we are and what's happening. Yeah, so um, we it was really a very interesting night. We had three balloons landing at night. We're going to talk about them later on. Um, we do have the new leader with uh, France One, who is now at 1,017 kilometers. So we also um, are above the 1,000 kilometer mark. Second is Poland 2 with 750 kilometers and Switzerland 3 with 875 kilometers. How do we look at the, uh, what do we think of the tracks if we get them on screen here now, we'll take away the positions and see what France are doing, what do we think? So um, yeah, as, as we see they are all slowly getting that right turn that we were always talking about. Yeah. Um, I think it all came a bit later than, than what most of those teams expected. Um, Poland landed here. France is currently continuing this flight uh, on. Switzerland had to land as well. We talk about this, and we basically have those two teams here: Switzerland one, uh, Switzerland two, and France two, chasing and trying to rush up. But they are a fair bit behind, and now they are flying at some pretty high altitude of about 5,000 meters. Um, with only um, well, this one here has 40 kilometers per hour, um, so. They are trying to catch up. So three balloons out of 15, still in the air, still in the flight mode. And we caught up in the basket this morning with the team from France. One. Bonjour, France one now in the lead. Hervé and Hervé, very good morning to you. Hello, hello everyone. Tell me how you're feeling right now. Uh, so much better. So we need a we need a cream for the sun. You're getting a suntan, yes? Yeah, we need cream sun. So round about a thousand kilometers now. Three nights in the air. Are you feeling exhausted? Are you feeling awake? Tell me how you feel. Uh, at least we have to feel awake because the race is not finished. Uh, we still have two concurrents, even if it's French, French too. Uh, we play for the for the nation, uh, but um, of course we are very happy. But uh, keep it uh, keep it on the on the race, and uh, everything will be decided on uh, this evening or this night. So still a long day ahead for you. It's never long. It's always a pleasure to fly, especially with this condition. You're feeling good about the conditions today? Any concerns? Yeah, yeah we are feeling good. It's uh, it's warm and sunny day now, so just uh, keep doing about it. And how was the night? Um, good. We are flying low. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, morning on the in south of Stuttgart with uh, with some hilly, with some cloud. Um, well, that's great. But the beginning of the night, of course, was not so so pleasure with rain. Uh, we have almost four hours under the rain in the uh, south of Berlin. But um, we keep it all electronics uh, dry and safe. So it was okay for us. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We're watching the 
whole world is watching and we wish you good flights and a safe day together. Enjoy, my Thank friend. You. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. A tout à Bye -bye. A tout à Ciao. It's a brand new day here in the studio for Gordon Bennett TV, bringing you this exciting action as it develops. What a night we had, and we've still got to catch up a little bit with Swiss 2. Uh, Mark, show us and tell us about Swiss 2, what's happening with them. So, yeah, Swiss 2, we, we saw that yesterday evening. They were actually still far behind. They were somewhere up here, still in, in Poland, and, and they did uh, an incredible catch-up flight. Um, they were flying at about 50 kilometers per hour. It's only about 300 meters above ground, so it's a very fast flight yeah. at low altitudes. Um, uh, so, yeah, they're now catching up uh, together with, with France 2, uh, trying to, to still beat France 1. But I think it will all come down to how much endurance they have. Well, we've got some video with a Swiss too. Let's catch up with them right now. Now, good morning, Kurt. Uh, sorry to wake you up, but oh. we need some uh, TV updates for you from you from the night. How was the night with the wind, uh, meals, and flying very deep uh, on the ground or almost on the ground? It, it was. Uh... <laughs> Really hard to, to fight uh, 50 meters above the windmills to have a good direction. But um, it was quite stable also with uh, 45 km per hour. So it, it was interesting that not more um, um, uh, wind was. was Turbulences. Turbulences, yes. So was, uh, turbulences, yeah. Not more turbulences, so it was good, but uh, well, challenging, challenging, huh? challenging. challenging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even lo so looking funny. down and <laughs> hearing the wind wheels, huh? Yeah. All right, and where are you right now here? Where are we seeing you now here? Yeah, after the stressy phase of our flight, I could go down for a nice sleep, and uh, you see here our bed. It's uh, wonderful to Where see. Where are your feet? Yeah, oh, okay. my feet are outside. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Here, you can see my feet. Okay. Half of my feet outside of the basket. And here we see the, the fuel cell, huh? Right? Yes. Okay, producing. Very good. Yeah. Very good job. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add? <sighs> I don't know what I have to say. <laughs> uh, I'm a little tired, but uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. We enjoy uh, that we have uh, uh, much ballast left and uh, we can fly further. Uh, maybe another 20, 30 hours. So, yeah, would be nice. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. See you Sleep next. well. Bye bye. I think in all my time with Gordon Bennett, that's the first time we've seen footage of somebody actually in the bed. We've talked about it before. Great to see. Yeah, like um, most of these balloons, they have some kind of a way that they can flat, uh, lay flat because, yeah, now we are into the almost 60 hours of flight. Yeah. So it is a, um, a very long flight for them. So this basket, they have kind of a hole where you can put the feet out. They, it, the hole is closed with, with fabric, so yeah. it's not like they would fall out there. Um, I saw the places where they um, had other means on, on just being able to flat lay because the, the basket itself is not big enough for like a whole person to lay down. And let's talk a little bit about uh, landing at night and night vision. Tell me about that, Mark. Yeah, so these are also images that we got actually from Switzerland too. So when they were flying at these 50 kilometers per hour, very low, um, these are windmills. So they really had those windmills turning below them and they used night vision to really see if there's any obstacle coming. So a lot of these teams do have equipment like that. I know of another team that actually even have ultrasound sensors seeing how high they're flying to just be safe in, in flight. And yeah, just in case they have to land in, in the night to make this landing as, as safe as possible. You know, like you said, those high winds for well, 50 knots, uh, kilometers per 50 hour. kilometers per hour, quite low down at night time. I mean, that's pretty extreme, isn't it? Yeah, they certainly need to be very careful and, and just realize if the balloon would be falling that they, yeah, like level it out again before they get too low. 
Well, we had a few teams landing yesterday. We're now just three teams left in the sky, and we're going to catch up with video and Germany won. Good morning, Regan. Good morning, together. We landed last night here in the south of Nuremberg at half past two, but we are fine and we had a safe landing. Yes, and yesterday evening uh, we saw um, Leipzig. We flew over Leipzig. It was a, it's a very nice town. And before we had um, contact to Berlin, uh, ATC, there's a big airport. And he said we must flow uh, uh, under 3,500 feet, so we go, must go down. And then we flew very low over Potsdam um, with uh, Bell, uh, Sossi, and uh, very, very nice to look at this from the balloon. And we saw the capital city of uh, Germany, Berlin. It's very, very nice, but. We lost a lot of sandbags because uh, we must uh, have to go down and uh, so on. Um, we must land this night. Uh, we would uh, fly to uh, after sun sunrise, but it doesn't work because the sandbags. We lost too much in this in the night, so we must land. Yeah, I think uh, we think uh, it was a real Gordon Bennett flight, and respect to all other pilots. Um, who are part of the Gordon Bennett. And uh, yeah, we uh, were very surprised that we lost so much sandbags last night, but uh, that's Gordon Bennett. And yes, maybe we can start again next year in St. Gallen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we wish uh, three teams in the air all the best, and uh, that's the best we'll win. Yes. Bye. Bye. Great to get the uh, videos from the team. We want to thank everybody who's sending all the footage in and we spend all day as well trying to contact the teams and get as much as we can from them to give to you. And we've got some great pictures, Mark. Yeah, like uh, Germany One has also sent us those pictures uh, that they are um, flying above Berlin here. As they mentioned, they had to go low over Berlin because of the air traffic um, restrictions. Um, and for a gas balloon, uh, we talked about this in earlier shows, it's like to maneuver always takes endurance. So if you have to go low, you let go gas, it gets you lower, but then when you want to go higher again, you need to get rid of, of ballast. Yeah. And in the end, this is what happened to Germany in that one now. They were running out of their fuel of the ballast and they had to land. This is another very nice picture um, that they took above um, the castle. And um, this is one more picture of um, them flying above Leipzig. So Leipzig for them was a difficult place as well uh, because of the airport. Uh, the problem with Leipzig is there's a lot of cargo planes. So they operate at night as well. Normally in Gordon Bennett at night, it's more easier because most passenger planes in Europe are not flying at night. Yes. So we have much, much more open airspace. Sometimes they're allowed to really cross right up top uh, on top of an airport. Um, but uh, Leipzig was a more difficult case because with cargo planes, they still operate at night. And tell me about the landings of uh, Swiss 1 and Poland 2, Mark. So, um, yeah, um, Switzerland 1 and Poland 2 were actually in, in, in very good positions. Poland 2 was in the lead at the time. Um, what uh, we got as a report is they had to land because they were running out of energy for their radio and GPS and all of that. Right. Now, in the video before from Switzerland, Two, we saw that Switzerland too had a fuel cell. Yes. So they really have um, a very, very modern way of, of, of generating their power based. It's ba I think it's, it's the fuel is ac actually alcohol that is being burned and, and being used to, to produce their energy. Right. And they, from my experience with teams flying with fuel cells, they usually have much less energy problems. Other teams, and I, I don't know exactly what Poland two is, is using, but all the two teams are having batteries plus solar energy. And then you just depend how much sol sun you actually get through your flight and if you're able to charge up your batteries. Really interesting stuff. And Swiss One, what happened to them? So yeah, Swiss One, they actually started hearing some noise from their envelope. Um, they believed that it started to leak a bit uh, and they were just concerned about that and wanted to do a safe landing while they have enough ballast um, and not having to do a um, an emergency landing later on. 
Now, with the ballast, it's really like in the, the ballast, you either need it usually for maneuvering or need, you need it into the night. Yeah. Because this is when the balloon is, calling, uh, is, is um, cooling down, it reduces its lift, and then you need to, to, to balance that off with, with sandbags. Now into the day, um, the remaining three balloons that are still flying, we, we basically accept, expect that they fly, can fly throughout the day. Yes. Because now the sun is heating up the balloon, so as long as they don't need to maneuver a lot, they can basically just let the balloon fly and they might not need to use any sand during the day. Talking to the people amongst our team, it doesn't feel like there's much confidence of anybody going into a fourth night. Well, um, it's always difficult to assess. Like this is an information the teams won't even give us and yeah. we should also, of course, not give it um, outside them. That's well, one we don't, of the we don't have it. We can't give it. We don't have it. That's <laughs> one of the... The biggest secret is if it's in Gordon Bennett. Like, yes. Teams are always hiding how much ballast they have left. The Switzerland Tour team in their video actually talked about another 24 hours of flight. So they included the night in there as well. Um, again, it's Gordon Bennett. We know when we know. Yeah, so streaming team behind the scenes. You might be here tomorrow as well. Be prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll not like. The record is like 93 hours, so that's only, we, we are still away from that. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll see. We will. Talking about the teams that have landed, we caught up with the 2018 champions from Bern, the reason that we're here in Poland. Let's catch up with Poland 2. One. Matthias Jacek, Team Poland 1, join us. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry, cześć, Regan. Dzień dobry, cześć. Hello, everyone. Where are you right now? Uh, we're in at Warsaw, my home. at the Athex home. So. Fantastic. Great. So what can you tell me about your race? Uh, start off, tell me about the launch, how that felt for you. Uh, well, it was the most beautiful launch we had since uh, the beginning of our Gordon Bennett career. Obviously, because it was in, uh, in our uh, homeland. <laughs> so there was a lot of our friends. Yeah, many friends. It was fantastic. Very proud, I think. Yeah. It was very emotional. The whole audience, yes. thousands of people were singing the Polish national anthem. Very rousing. Yes, yes. Uh, that, was, was that was beautiful. Even we were singing while uh, still uh, going up in the air. You, you were almost out of the basket, uh, Mateos. You were hand out standing <laughs> up come on <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yes uh, we were uh, i just wanted to wave to, to all the fans and uh, all my friends and family yeah. uh, was i was very very happy that that we could have launched from poland uh, and it was actually our first flight from poland ever since we cannot get uh, hydrogen here for the moment that's amazing that's great bit of information we didn't know that before that's really good to hear so tell me about the yeah. first night going into the next day how was that for you uh well it was uh, quite okay i i think we did a good job uh, in in finding the right trajectories uh we our plan was to go as much to the north as we can uh, while not going too much to the east and uh, in the end it, it turned out uh, to be fine the first night was quite easy compared to the uh, rest of the flight. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. And you can tell me now about your strategy. You're intending to hold there and then get the winds heading west. Yes, yes, of course. That was that was our plan uh, to to go to the west. Uh, that was the plan from the beginning. I I saw some people speculating that we may want to go to Lithuania, but that was never. Uh, never our idea. Uh, of course, it was a difficult task to go to the West uh, for many reasons. Basically, uh, the the low pressure area and cold front uh, accompanying it uh, may, made us... Uh, mm, well, it was complicated to get through it. And later on, there was many, uh, many difficulties along the way. Oh, the, in the first day, there was a big problem with thermic condition. Yeah. Um, with 
we lose a lot of ballast, but not fire. It's, it was quite good, but we should, uh, we, we was uh, all the time, uh, we was all the time, there was no time for rest. We, we, yes. We, Definitely, there was a lot of work in the first day. The thermals were crazy. We were going up and down, up and down, and really there was n nothing we could have done uh, if we wanted to continue our strategy. Yeah, that's what we've heard from a lot of people. It wasn't, it wasn't a cruising day. It was a day of technicality, a day of hard work and concentration. Yeah, that's that's uh, exactly right. And tell me about yesterday. Yesterday, well, uh, yesterday was very good, but also very difficult uh, up to the critical moment. But in in the in the morning we got a free ride because of the high clouds. We were not using any ballast, so we we were uh, quite happy. The direction finally moved to the west, so so we could have. Uh, We've known that uh, the, the strategy is working, but for the whole day, we were on the edge of the, of the rain area, but uh, we were quite safe from it. Uh, except when, except that uh, we had the problem for, for gas balloon, it's very bad when there is sun that is heating up the balloon and it's going up. And then there is uh, a shadow that of the clouds from the clouds that moves it down. So the whole day we had the situation that we either were in sun or in the clouds, uh, up to the critical point where we got so cold and we couldn't really fight it that we got inside the cloud that was uh, nearby, and uh, the cloud, which is. You know, from from the ground, it doesn't look so scary, but the the uh, the cloud covered us in ice. Then we got a little bit of snow, and then we got into a really heavy rain, which mm, made us go mm, basically to the ground. Wow! Yeah, you had all the conditions there—the ice, the snow, and the rain. Wow! Yeah, and it was in in, uh, in area of Berlin, so. Um, we cannot continue flights when uh, 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 we must run. Yes. And obviously you're watching the tracking, you're watching the race continue. Can I ask about your predictions for the rest of today, for the race? Uh, well, uh, to be honest, we're not at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we, we, we were very tired, so we just woken up just before the, the our interview again. Yes. And, and yesterday was uh, lots of hard of work uh, since uh, we landed in a spot that we had to move the balloon by hand. But luckily we got some uh, help from the fire brigade <laughs> and, uh, and some friendly farmers in Germany, uh, which were, you know, just perfect. We had 10 more people to help us get the balloon out. So uh, yeah, thanks for those guys. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Well, the reason we're here, you won the Gordon Bennett in Bern in 2018. You brought it to Poland. Of course, every team wants to win. But that aside, do you feel proud of what's happened and having the Gordon Bennett here back in your home country? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, it's you know, uh, it's... It was so long for the Polish balloonists uh, that uh, the Gordon Bennett happened here that we're definitely proud that it, we finally after 85 years after 85 years you know it's years, it's, yeah. uh, it's a, a big achievement and and an amazing prize uh, in itself uh, besides the Gordon Bennett uh, winning and gold medals it's uh, it's we're just proud that uh, the Gordon Bennett this beautiful race happened in Poland. And it turned out that because many people were afraid that uh, it could end very fast since the bo border of uh, Belarus is so close. And it turned out that it's, it's, the race was very interesting with many strategies and uh, many things that pilots could have done in many different conditions. Absolutely great. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We know you need your rest and uh, I'm sure everybody watching 
is uh, feeling great to get this information for you. But we'll see you back here at the weekend. In the meantime, yes. thank of you so course. much. See you again. And, see you. Uh, bye, bye. bye, everyone. What a great team. Paul and one, of course, I introduced them as Paul and two, but it's great to have them there. Great to get that information. What a show. Mark, what are people saying who are watching? Yeah, there's, uh, uh, again, a lot of cheering for uh, Franz Van and Papi. Um, uh, still a lot of questions on Poland 1, uh, Poland 2. Um, basically, also, can we connect to them and get them in, in an interview here? We're trying. We're trying all day long. We've got our researcher, Christian, who's spending... How many hours does he start? He starts at like 6 in the morning until almost midnight, trying to contact all the teams and trying to get them in. I'll just shout out of the studio, Christian, what's happening with the, with Poland 2? Have we, have we had any contact with them? Yeah, we're trying, we're trying our best. We will try and get all the teams to you as best we can. Anybody else? Anything to say? Um, yeah, there is um, one, one comment from Ruth Wilson saying um, she has a recommendation for a book title for uh, Kurt, which says Camping in the Sky. Camping in the Sky. Yes, that's a good one. And we had a one question on Facebook saying, was there any ever an opportunity for the teams to curl around towards Ireland? But I don't think the winds were ever there for that. I think before the race, we saw a few trajectories, um, but that's not taking into account all the like limitations of weather. Um, in the recent times, I did not see them. I just ran the collation of um, Switzerland um, 2 if they would fly for another 48 hours, which is certainly more than what we expect, and they would actually just land south of Ireland, which, yeah, it's not a blessed place to be. Wow. We just have another uh, comment from Robert just uh, saying thank you for the great race coverage. Oh, it's like, we love bringing it to you. We absolutely do. So running up to the event, everybody was saying it's going to be the shortest Gordon Bennett ever. It's going to be over before the end of the first night. All the teams will have landed. It's going to be the quickest one we've ever had. Well, it's turning out not to be that way at all, Mark. No, I think we had another um, eight to ten hours for sure, just flying through the day. Um, that's at least what I have a feeling from the team. And... Um, we're going to catch up again at, at five, I guess. Will anybody go into the fourth night? You have to keep watching. Keep your fingers and your eyes on the tracking live.gordonbennett.aero. But we'll be back with you for the next update at five o'clock local time here in Poland. From everybody here in the Gordon Bennett TV studio, we'll see you then.